enabling us to come boldly to your throne of grace where we can receive mercy. We can ask you to forgive us of our sin if we have offended Holy Spirit in thought, word, or deed. We thank you for your enablement and your precious blood that washes us and cleanses us from all of our sins. Thank you for keeping us and protecting us, keeping our right mind up until this appointed time. Thank you, O oh God, for our facilitator, Pastor Arlene Mitchell. Continue to use her to your glory. Strengthen her, Father, as she continues to walk in her destiny. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we again discuss this topic of abortion, we know that you are a loving and a forgiving God and that all of us have come short of your glory in some way. I thank you, O oh God, once again for your steadfast love and your un failing faithfulness to us all. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray, oh God, that there will be no transmission interference in this communication. Thank you, oh God, once again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Could everyone on the line just begin to open up your, up your mouth and just begin to bless him? Yes, right now. Father. Jesus, open we up your thank you, O oh God. For you so are the wonderful. true and living He's God. So and beside He's you, so there wonderful. is none He's other. We, we thank you for being our peace. We so thank good. you for being He's our so strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, you for Jesus. being our battle. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our thank you very much, God. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory thank you. to your name. Yes, Hallelujah. You are God so most high. Thank you for having your way. And we give you glory. Thank you, thank you Father. God. We say thank glory you, to your so name. We, we give you all hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Prayer and Empowerment Global Ministries, where we are revolutionizing the world through the power of prayer and the spoken word. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here. Will you do me a favor and take the time right now to share this conference call with somebody you know? Can you do that for me? If you're on Facebook right now, it's on my page. It's on the ministry page. Feel free to share it right now. If you have a friend, go ahead and text a friend or two and tell them. This is going to be great information. You want to join this conference call. I'm waiting for you. Come on, everybody. I need you to come on in, and I need you to go ahead and invite to your girlfriend. Come on, honey, enjoy this conversation because it's going to be a great conversation that we are about to have. We're glad to have you here. This is our first, somebody say first, our first, our hour of the new year. And we are ecstatic about it because we believe that God gave us this vision to address some powerful topics that most people will not even touch. But we thank God for the wherewithal to say we're going to tackle this and we are going to get some results. Can you do me a favor? Get out your pens, get out your pads, get out your Bibles. Be prepared to take some notes. There will be a time for questioning and answering. We're going to ask you to please hold your questions until she finished her presentation, until she asks for some input. But we want her to be able to share as much as she has to share in the time allotted. We are so honored to have my sister, my friend, to come on and share 
with us tonight. I had the awesome privilege to be able to experience the conference of this ministry um, that she is heading now. And I am elated that she had the time to be able to come and share this information with us. Let me tell you about my sister friend, Bethany Lynn Williams, born again believer. She is a born again believer for 45 years. Did you hear that? Member of the First Baptist Church of Renarton of 25 years. And the senior pastor is John K. Jenkins Sr. She is the director of Beauty for Ashes, the abortion recovery and healing ministry at FBCG. She's a graduate of the acclaimed HBCU Central State University. We thank God that she is the Senior Human Resources Analyst for the U.S. Treasury Department. I am so very glad to have my sister and friend over on this conference line to share. We call it the Power Hour because power defined is the ability to get results. We call it the Power Hour because the ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially as a quality, the power. Oh, when I tell you, we have the power. Somebody open up your mouth and say, I have the power. <laughs> I have the power to get results. And the reason why we call it the power hour is because we want to get results in this area. We want to get the, the results that we need in the area of politics in the church. We want to get the results that we need as it states um, homosexuality in the church. We're talking about a power hour. We're talking about topics that we really don't address on a regular basis. How about masturbation? Yes? How about that? How about divorce? How about that? How about leadership and divorce? How about that? How about, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about some really major topics that we don't take the time to address in the church? We are dealing with it in our power hour. Somebody say power hour. <laughs> I know I can't hear you, but it is our power hour, and we're starting it out with a powerful discussion about abortion. And without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic over to my sister and my friend, Bethany Lynn Williams. You can start fix your phone so we can hear you and we can begin our discussion. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, loud and clear. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. I want to thank Pastor Arlene and her team for this privilege and opportunity. I know she could get any speaker anywhere on any topic that she needs, and I f I'm humbled by the fact that she thought enough of me and what she witnessed at our ministry for me to come and share briefly with you. Um, as as uh, Pastor Arlene already mentioned, I am the director of the Beauty for Ashes uh, ministry at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. It is one of the only churches that I know that has an abortion and, re and healing recovery, post-abortion and healing recovery ministry. Um, and, and I'll just tell you a little bit of background about me. I first want to read, I want to read a scripture because this is the foundation scripture for our ministry, and many of you are going to be very familiar with it. It's uh, taken from Isaiah chapter 61 verses, just quick verses 1 through 3, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And that scripture not only is our foundation scripture for the ministry, but it truly represents why I'm here. It's only for God's glory. It's only to expose 
Satan's lies and his deception that he's kept so many of us under for so long. Um, a little bit about my testimony, as Arlene mentioned, um, I just experienced my 55th birthday last week. So being saved for 45 years, that means that I got saved when I was 10 years old. So I have been walking with the Lord for a long time, by no means perfect, but have loved Jesus for just a really long time. And I'm a pastor's daughter. My father's still a pastor in Brooklyn, New York, and, you know, came up in the, in the, in the Lord's house in, the, in, a, in a godly family. And so wouldn't say that I was the ideal candidate for experiencing an abortion, but that ended up being part of my testimony. I was in graduate school. I was 22 years old. I was I'm still a virgin. I was in graduate school down in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and while I was a student in graduate school, um, the, the church that I was attending, um, you know, I was in the choir, met the drummer, we started dating, you know, fast forward uh, rapidly, we ended up having sex outside of marriage, unprotected sex outside of marriage, and I ended up pregnant. This was my first time ever having intercourse, and I got pregnant, and I was terrified. I, like I said, I was the pastor's daughter. I'm the youngest. At that particular time, I was the first one in my family to graduate from college, and I, I felt a lot of self-imposed -impo pressure. I would never, uh, you know, um, presume to put it on, on my family to say that they put pressure on me. It was self-imposed. I felt it. I felt, you know, like I was expected to succeed, expected to accomplish, and how in the world could I do all of that while I had just graduated from college, I was in graduate school, attending a Christian graduate school, and, you know, uh, coming up with a crisis pregnancy, unexpected pregnancy, and I, I was in fear. I did not call anybody. I didn't reach out to my family. I know for a fact if I had reached out to one of my sisters or my parents, they would have affirmed me and loved me and let me know that it was okay and they would have supported me. I didn't give them that opportunity. I made the decision. I stayed isolated. I was very isolated when I was in graduate school because I was away from family. I was establishing new relationships and so forth, but I was definitely away from my, from my core accountability and family members and um, made the wrong decision, made um, a decision. I wouldn't say it was one in haste, but it was definitely driven out of fear. And because I had a relationship with the Lord, I wouldn't call it a premeditated kind of, you know, sin, but I knew that I, I would be forgiven. I knew that all sin was forgivable. And while I knew abortion was a sin, I never got an abortion thinking it was okay or justifying it in my head spiritually or anything like that. I knew abortion was wrong, but I was too terrified to face the consequences of, you know, an unexpected pregnancy, not being married, you know, being in graduate school and just trying to get my life started. It just... The fear gripped me. And I listened to Satan's lies. I don't want to leave that out. I listened to Satan's lies where, you know, I, um, I had to, like I talked about the self-imposed fear. I listened to his deception about you can't go home uh, and face your family, you know, with a baby. You'd pass this daughter. What your father, what's going to happen to your father's church? What's your family going to say? I, I listened to all those whisperings and all of those deceptive thoughts and, um, and made the wrong decision to, uh, to have an abortion at 22 years old. And um, when, fast forward a little bit, when I, when I made that decision and, um, you know, again, repented, got my, got my life back on track, you know, tried to stay on the straight and narrow, um, ended up getting married and moving to this area, to the uh, Washington area. And when I joined First Baptist Church, of Glen Arden. I joined in 96. Probably a few years after that, one of the women's fellowships, my pastor's wife was uh, leading the women's fellowship, a women's conference or something, and she said, I need everybody who has had an abortion to stand up. I want to pray for you. I was not free at that time, so I did not stand. I said, my first lady has really bumped her head. She really thinks people are going to stand up in here and admit that they had an abortion. That's where I was. There were plenty of people that did stand up but I was not free enough to stand up. I knew I was forgiven, but I wasn't free. And so I did not stand up at that time. And fast forward a few years later, um, they, there, was a, uh, there was a pilot ministry. We call it a pilot because you kind of you identify a need, you write up a proposal, present it to our leadership, and, and then they put a pilot out for the ministry to see if there's a need for it and if it, if it takes. 
And so the pilot ministry for Beauty for Ashes um, was happening, and, and I took a one-day symposium. I, I attended the one-day symposium where you get to go and hear about, you know, what takes place with the, with the healing, because I felt like I was good. I felt like I'm saved. I know I'm forgiven. I didn't really think healing was necessary, and that's one of the things I wanted to highlight also, because when we talked about the topic for tonight, it may have sounded, <clears throat> excuse me, it may have sounded redundant to mention recovery and healing. If you think about when you get a cold or if you get sick, you can recover. Your physical body will recover. An abortion you know, your body goes through a lot with an abortion. A lot of people, you know, have, um, you know, um, consequential illnesses in different situations that they can face. It's not, it's not uh, something that everybody faces, but you can recover physically from an abortion. But to truly have healing and be made whole, that, that fundamentally that's got to take a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's why we refer to it as recovery and healing, because you can recover physically and even, even mentally. You can even go to a psychiatrist or go to some counseling and get some help, you know, mentally and emotionally to help, to help get, you, um, get you straight. But true healing and rest, rest, restoration toward wholeness really has to come from a relationship um, with Christ, and that's, that's where the ministry um, comes in. I'm so grateful to be a part of a church that had the courage to say there are women, the statistics say one in four women, one in every four. So if we have 40 women on this call, 10 of us, nine times out of 10, have had an abortion experience or been directly involved in one. And with statistics like that, I'm part of a large church, over 10,000 members, and there's no way in the world that there wouldn't be a need for this. And so even though our numbers may be relatively small, as far as who comes forward and has the courage to say, I need this ministry, it's definitely a much-needed ministry. And I'm going to give you a snapshot of how we take po- uh, women that have identified themselves as being post-abortive and in need of healing. They recognize that although I'm forgiven and although I'm saved and I know Jesus loves me and I know he's forgiven me of the sin, I still have nightmares or I still have emotional breakdowns or I still can't go to baby showers or I can't really celebrate my friends when they have, um, you know, babies and when uh, relatives invite me over. I can't babysit my nieces and nephews, different things like that. A lot of people don't realize that those things are, can be tied to an abortion experience. There's something called um, post-abortion stress. A lot of times when we think of PTSD, I know many of you are probably familiar with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's usually affiliated with people that have gone through the military, gone to war, experienced something um, directly like 9-11 or some, some major trauma like that. But a derivative of PTSD is something called PAS, post abortion stress and post-abortion syndrome. And that syndrome comes because abortion is a trauma. Just like the people that have gone to war and the people that have faced other tragedies and those types of traumas, abortion is a trauma. It's a trauma on your body. It's a trauma on your spirit. It's a trauma on, on to your mind. So post-abortion stress and post-abortion syndrome is actually a real syndrome, again, derived from PTSD. What our ministry does is we take the reality of what abortion is and what it does, and and we take three components. It's it's called the discipleship ministry at our church. We have a discipleship ministry that, that is broken down into three components. And the first component is the healing component. It's Bible study. All of them are Bible study oriented and scripture based, and we have textbooks that are also scripture based that we use. But the first portion is the healing Bible study. That is where we have um, we use uh, we use topics like revealing the secret, sharing the secret. One of our textbooks is called Surrendering the Secret. So we're pulling off the veil of shame and the veil of secrecy and the veil of, you know, hiding behind um, the embarrassment of going, having gone through an abortion. Because um, as we well know, as good as the church is and as needful and as, as essential as the church is, the church uh, at large has not always taken the right position in dealing with this topic. We really haven't, and I'm thankful that that, that is starting to change. It's changing slowly but yeah. surely. But um, as it changes, we're recognizing the need for the, for the healing portion where we're revealing the secret. We're teaching the women to walk in truth. 
We're teaching them um, to deal with the, the emotions of anger and, um, and, and grief and forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big piece. Many of the ladies that come to us were forced to have abortions by their parents. They got pregnant as a teenager, and they didn't have any say in, as to whether or not they could keep their baby. They were minors, and their parents made the decision for them, and they've grown up with resentment and bitterness toward their parents and never really dealt with that sometimes. So we're talking about forgiveness in that aspect. Other women have gone to, um, you know, gone through the agony of being forced by their boyfriend and sometimes even their husband, believe it or not. You know, even in marriages, abortions take place. But for the most part, um, a, a large, uh, you know, um, contingency of our women have come and they've been pressured by some external force to have that abortion. So forgiveness is a huge piece of the healing journey that we take these ladies on. And we, um, we help them to, we, you know, we give them exercises and we take them through steps where they can actually release the anger and the, and the pain. Some of the ladies, I had one lady come to us a few years ago. She was 65 years old. She had an abortion at 13 and had never told anybody until she told me, until she came to me and expressed interest in coming to the ministry and we did an intake on her, and when we do the intake, we, we uh, sort of, it's almost like a brief interview. We just want to get an assessment on who the ladies are that are coming to our ministry so we can know their story. And, um, and so we have people that can be as, as, as senior, as a senior citizen, and have never shared that with anybody. Walking with the Lord, saved, sweet people, but just never you know, unveil those secrets. And, um, and it's, it's a powerful journey. So that healing piece is the first part. We, we actually go through a candlelight memorial service. We actually go through a, a ceremony where we help the ladies. Um, we ask them to, to let the Holy Spirit, we take like two weeks, and we ask them to be in prayer and fast if they need to, to let the Holy Spirit reveal to them what the sex was of their baby, and then let the Holy Spirit also lead them to naming their child. Because one of the things that helps free you is to come out of denial and stop calling it a clump of tissue, stop calling it a, 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 a bunch of cells or a blob of tissue. We can't buy into the lies of our society and our politicians. It's, it's not about, as saints and as Christians, we want to have the heart of God. And we want to say, Lord, help me. When, when we say, Lord, help me love what you love, help me hate what you hate, help me, help me love like you love. We want to be able to embrace the truth of, of what God, uh, how God sees life. We know life begins at conception, and we want to embrace God's position on life and not the world's position and not the politician's position. And that's so important because it's easy to get swept up by what society says is okay because part of the bondage that we end up in as post-abortive women Nobody really gives you permission to grieve because abortion most of the time can be elective. And a lot of times you may not know somebody's story. Like I mentioned, you know, parents have made children get abortions and different things like that. But for the most part, if you're an adult person, they view you as somebody who got an abortion electively. So you don't get the opportunity to grieve. You don't even feel entitled to grieve. A lot of post-abortive women don't even feel entitled to grieve because I made the choice. It's like, how do I cry over something that I chose to do? How do I, you know, and, and we tell ourselves that it's a blob of tissue so we don't have to face the reality of it was a baby. The, the, um, the baby, um, upon conception, we know life starts, but people don't even know that there's a heartbeat as early as 18 to 21 days after conception. I'm not talking weeks. I'm not talking months. 18 to 21 days after the sperm meets the egg, there is a heartbeat. A lot of people don't know that. They don't want you to know that when they want you to support abortion and they want you to, you know, vote for abortion and support, you know, politicians that support abortion. So there's so much truth to that, and that's going to lead me to the second component. The second component of our three-phased um, discipleship ministry is the education piece. We take ladies through um, an eight-week Bible study of educating them on the background about abortion. A lot of people don't realize um, about the about the um, the movements that uh, that that are behind abortion and how oppressed our people were as African Americans, and how when we came out of slavery, when we came out of slavery, they wanted to still oppress us, and they didn't want us. Now that we were free. They wanted to still oppress us and keep us bound, and they didn't want us procreating. 
So they strategically tried to figure out how how we could. Um, and I'm, one, I'm I'm trying to think of the name of the of the actual industry. It'll come to me. But um, but uh, there's a film that you can watch, Mafa 21. It's on YouTube, and Mafa is spelled M-A-A-F-A, Mafa 21. And it's uh, about a two-hour video that will educate you on the background of abortion and uh, um, the eugenics movement. That's what I'm trying to say, eugenics movement. The eugenics movement was a bunch of powerful, you know, politicians, judges, and, and all kinds of folks that, that wanted to continue to oppress black people. And they literally strategically uh, made it so that, you know, uh, uh, welfare and, and, and birth control pills and things like that. We had to agree to have an abortion in order to, to be able to get some state benefits, and some of that happened in the state of Maryland. Other things like um, putting abortion uh, clinics in our communities, in low-income communities, so that it would be very accessible near our high schools, all kinds of things like that. I can't go into all of that, but that's what part of what we talk about in the education piece, and we give ladies scriptures about how to be able to support and have a have a have dialogue with people about supporting life, and um, and we go through films, we go through biblical films and um, and uh, and educational films that teach you about the origin of abortion, where it came from. So it's almost like after we get you healed, then we get you educated, and you get almost like a righteous indignation about I can't believe we were deceived because. Abortion, in order to make a decision for abortion, especially if you have a relationship with the Lord, and yes, believe it or not, Christians do have abortions, and there are a lot of Christians that believe in abortion, and that's why it's so important to get the truth out. So when you get educated, you can realize, even though I made that choice, I was still deceived. I was still, I was still um, you know, influenced by the, the politicians. I was influenced by the fact that it was so easy to get. When I got an abortion in 1988, living in Virginia Beach, the abortion clinic, and I was living in a nice neighborhood. I was walking distance probably from the ocean, from less than a mile from the ocean front, um, down in Virginia Beach. Nice apartment, nice community. The abortion clinic was between me and the beach. It was easy walking distance for me to get to an abortion clinic. I found it in the yellow pages. Abortion shouldn't be that accessible. It shouldn't be that easy for me to make a decision. Because I told somebody, I said, I know if abortion was illegal and I had to go to a back alley and see somebody standing over me with the hanger, I would have thought twice second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time before doing anything. But because it's so accessible and it's so easy and, and readily available, all of those things influence people in making decisions. And I know I need to wrap up. My 20 minutes is almost up. And the last phase is the empowerment piece. After we get the ladies healed and, and, and recovered and restored, we, uh, we help them with – I'm sorry, I set myself up my own timer um, – <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready to stop. We, um, we, we, after we get them healed and, and restored and we educate them about the industry um, um, of abortion and the background of abortion, then we empower them. What we do is at the end of phase two, they write out their testimony. Like they write out everything they can remember. If they went through sexual abuse, if they were promiscuous, whatever led to them making their abortion decision, most ladies that come to us have multiple abortion decisions. Most of them have made more than one decision decision for abortion. A lot of them have ended up using it as, um, as, uh, as birth control oftentimes. And so when they, when they write out their story, they write out everything that happened, everything that led to their decision for abortion. When the ladies come to us, we always make sure that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ because we help them to understand that fundamentally you're not going to get the full healing and wholeness that you need until you believe that Jesus Christ loves you. He uh, not only has forgiven you, but that he's ready to make you whole. So we always want to bring, make sure that ladies are in a redemptive relationship with Jesus Christ because that's the foundation of everything that we're talking about. So when they develop their testimony, they, we let them write out everything that happened, and we help them um, as facilitators and teachers, we help them format it down to about a three-minute version of the testimony, we, and you might call it the elevator version um, um, or so forth, and we have them, we, we create opportunities for them to go and share their testimony. Sometimes they'll share it at a, at a pregnancy center with, um, with other ladies. Sometimes they'll share it in the women's prison. Sometimes they'll share it in a, in a homeless shelter. They'll, we'll share it with other discipleship ministries um, in, our, in our church. They also do 12 hours of independent study. 
they develop their their speaking skills so that they have the confidence to share their story and the and the fear is um, is removed and so forth. There's so much more that I could share. I didn't realize how fast 20 minutes was going to go by. But I want to I want to be obedient and respectful of the time that I was given. That's the that's the essence of the ministry that we're a part of, and it's miraculous what's happening with the ladies that come through the ministry. I am a product of that ministry. When I first came to it, didn't think I I needed it because I knew I was forgiven. But when I actually went through the components of um, of the healing, the education, and the empowerment, I saw how needful it was, and I'm so thankful to be able to have a platform to not only give God glory in this way, but to encourage other ladies to, to, um, to pause and think about how God feels about life and how he feels about, um, about the unborn and, um, and realize that, that healing and naturally forgiveness is available to you, but restoration and wholeness through healing is, is also available to you. And I just thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm open for questions. I don't know. I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Arlene and let her lead me in whichever direction for the questions. Amen. Amen. This was so awesome. What a wonderful presentation. You have done a masterful job in explaining and expressing. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Thank you for being so transparent with us and sharing your testimony that can help so many of us ladies here. I'm going to open up the line to for anyone that would like to share. I just I need to say this. We want to hear from as many people as we can. We don't have a whole bunch of time because it's an hour power, which means it's one hour on the line. So that means that as much as you want to share your whole life story, you can't do it tonight, sweetheart. Just give me two minutes. Give us two minutes. If you have a question for our, for our special guest, please um, come on the line. If you just wanted to come on the line and say, hey, Bethany, I'm here to support you. I enjoyed you. Thank you so much for sh- whatever you want to share. You got two minutes to share it. When you hear my bell ring, when you hear me clicking, <laughs> uh, you clicking on this, you hear that? Yes, the time is up. <laughs> if, you have, <laughs> if you have any questions that we cannot address, you can always send those questions in, and we can pass them on to Bethany Williams. We knew that we, would go- we were going to need some extra time and perhaps have a, a part two to this when her time is available. But by, right now, I want those of you that can and will, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, how did you feel about this? Was this new information for you? Was it helpful? I mean, granted, this may not be for you, but it can be for your daughter. It can be for the ministry that you're in. It is vital, it's very, this information was so vital to me. And I said, the ministry needs to hear this because you need to hear that God still loves you in the midst of it all. Um, somebody already texted me, part two is needed. <laughs> so we need to hear more of what um, Bethany has to share with her, her schedule for this. We definitely want to have her come back. Like she said, she wasn't able to give you everything, but she gave us a brief summary of what this ministry represents. And I'm talking until you unmute your phone. Star six. The command is star six to unmute your phone. If you would like to come on the line to share a, yes. a brief testimony, yes. and give a question, you have two minutes. Hi, this is Tisa. How you doing? Um, hey, Tisa. Hey, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Bethany, for um, your presentation. It was awesome. It was amazing. Um, I've Thank never you. heard um, when you said to pray. I think you said to pray for the sex of the child and name the child. That was amazing. I, I've never. Can you elaborate about that a little bit for me, please? Sure, sure. It's, you know, it's a, it's one of the steps that we take in the, toward the end of the healing Bible study. And it's because, it's because we're, in order to, in order to fully recognize that this was a child and that a life was here and that it's okay to grieve and there was a loss that existed, we ask people, and we've never had anybody that the Holy Spirit didn't speak to about what the sex of their child was. Most people already knew what the what their child was, um, you know, in their because, uh, like I said, the ladies have relationships with the Lord, and so the Holy Spirit has either already revealed it to them, or during that period that they take, they just pray and they just ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, you know, to reveal to them to show them what the uh, what the sex of their child was, and then the Lord leads them to a meaningful name that represents, you know, um, uh, something special that w- that they would have wanted to use if you know if the child had lived and and. 
and it's a beautiful experience. It's part of the candlelit ceremony. We give them a certificate of life for the child to recognize that the child was here. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful portion of our, of our healing, uh, the end of the healing Bible study. Does that help answer your question? Yes, that was amazing. Thank you so much. And you're located out of where? We're we're located in the in the DC area. We're in um we're in upper my church is in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And due to the pandemic, we actually we actually have opened up our Bible study before you had to be in the local area to be able to sign up for our discipleship ministries. But now due to COVID, we do have uh, we're doing things virtually. And so we had people in. Um, upstate New York on our on our class last time. So, if you're interested, I'll be able to forward my information to uh, Reverend uh, yeah. Pastor Arlene, yeah. so you can consider uh, partaking. We'll have another session starting in the fall. Our next session will be starting at the beginning of October of this year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Is there anybody else? Hi. This is, this is Evelyn. Okay. And I just want to say, um, this was awesome, Bethany, that you, um, the way you broke this down and how you have the candlelight for the women. I never, ever heard anything like this before. And I was like, wow, it was so much good information that you gave tonight. And I was just saying to myself in my head, we need a part two because this is a lot. <laughs> and I thank God um, for all the information that you gave. And I never heard anything like having this for the women, the candlelight, and letting them rename their um, baby and everything like that. I'm like, wow, this is a lot of information. So I would truly, truly thank God for you and thank God for the information that you put forth tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for participating and being here. And I really appreciate all the feedback. This is a blessing. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Evelyn. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. You're welcome. Hi, this is Tracy from Michigan. Thank you, Bethany, for um, sharing the strategically intelligent yes. deliverance ministry um, at your yes. church. You know, a lot of times um, church makes deliverance spooky, and um, this is exactly what the body of Christ needs. <laughs> for all ages, and I really appreciate, um, you know, your pastor, your first lady, and for you and all of the leaders who are really taking care to just go into the depths of bondage to free um, our sisters. This is absolutely incredible. I'm a fan of people being free indeed, and I just thank you so much. Um, for sharing this, because this is just us being aware and hearing this and hearing the template, um, you know, of healing and uh, deliverance and increasing in the word is just tremendous. So thank you so much. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for that feedback. I'm, I'm ecstatic to, to be a part of it, just as illuminating as it is for, for you folks. It, I felt the same way when I came into this awareness. And we're even running a pilot. We started it, I want to say, in 2019. I don't think we continued it during COVID because the numbers were low. But we're actually even starting a pilot for the men because, as we well know, even though we may deal with the major brunt of the abortion experience, you know, we don't get pregnant by ourselves. And oftentimes we are persuaded to have abortions, and so the men need healing and forgiveness and so yeah. forth. Yeah, so it's um it's a powerful ministry. Love it. Yeah, yeah. It's powerful. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. God bless you. And, and again, thank you. This is Linda. I would love to see you to uh, branch out. Have you thought about expanding? And um, you know, helping other people to maybe, like you said, you deal with upstate. You said we're at. Well, actually, I mentioned that because we were virtual due, due to COVID, and and we haven't been in our church building since last March. Um, we were we all of our ministries went virtual, so all of our teachings, all of our classes, all of our discipleship programs were all online via Zoom or or uh, Microsoft Teams, and we were able to expand and open up to um, people that are not logistically in the D.C. area. 
Yeah. So, oh, so you're okay. able to, you are able to sign up and partake in, in the classes. You know, it's, um, it, the Lord may do some more things with this ministry in the future, but it's, it's a pretty heavy bandwidth to, to lead it at my church because we do attend a large church and everything is so structured in a way that you feel like you have a part-time job when you lead a ministry at our church yeah. because everything is, uh, there, there's just, it's a high level of excellence that everything is done in. Yeah. So working full time, it can be a heavy lift, but, but I would love to share and invite people to, you know, be able to participate in the, in the healing Bible study that will start this fall. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. If you give us that information so that we can zoom in and participate, sure I would will. appreciate it. God bless you. Sure Thank will. you so much. Sure. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We will definitely pass that information on. I knew we would need a part two as well. This is delicious. <laughs> this is so so good. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else have a question? Please do not yes. be afraid. Yes, this is Deborah Belton. Hi, Bethany. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> How are you? I am I'm so awesome. Proud. Thank you for being on the call. I am so proud of you and your sisters to see how y'all have blossomed and bloomed from little girls. Oh, um, my goodness. Was, Thank you so much. <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, and you beat me to it, I was going to ask you if you were going to have, is this part of a, men are going to be part of that ministry um, because I believe men need to be healed also. So it's good to know that you're going to be doing that. I just want to come on and say hello. God bless you. Uh, Thank you. We do have a part two. So God bless. Yes, we definitely, I will commit to, to doing part two. Um, Pastor Arlene already asked me if I would be able to do next week. If I can, I will, I will let her know, but we'll definitely, I do promise to schedule with her um, and coordinate a part two. Promise. Yay. <laughs> 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 Hi, this is this is Allison. Just called to um, encourage Bethany. We bet Didi and I got. I think Didi may have been on the line. I'm not sure, but we got off our prayer call to support Bethany, and we're very proud of what she's doing in the ministry. So, just Thank wanted to get on and say we. Yes, you're welcome. Just want to say love you, proud of what you're doing and how God is using you to help heal and um, just sh- shine a light on an area that. Um, Satan has allowed women to just grieve silently and stay in a dark place and it's light mm-hmm. and, and it's like a hand is reaching down to help, you know, deliver and make people be whole in other areas that they probably never even realized they needed to be whole in and didn't even know how maybe. So mm-hmm. it's awesome and we're excited that, you know, you're being used in this way. So amen. Hey, R.R. <laughs> hey, that's my best. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ali. I appreciate your support. Love you lots. That's love my sister, ya. everybody. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love so it. how do I get back? Do I star six again to mute myself? Yes. Yes, you Okay. Do. Bye, y'all. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I do Is have there a question. anybody else? We have? Yes. yes? I, do have, I do have a question, yeah. Um, while I have never um, had an abortion, my question to you is definitely... This is oh, this is funny. This is Petra. This is Elder Petra. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, Elder Petra. Thank you very much. You don't know my voice. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to have no, to you have say who you are. I just want everybody to know who we're saying. We're speaking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good save. Good save. Anyway, question is, um, well, I've never had an abortion, but because I minister to women consistently. They say, how do I deal with, I'm on both sides of the coin. By that I mean, um, I believe in a woman's right to choose, but I also believe in life. You, you know what I mean? And, and I go, I think of it this way. I've had a, um, a member of my family, she's a, a, a senior. Years ago, she had an abortion. Now, back in her day, they weren't illegal, or I'm not going to say they weren't legal, but they weren't legal for black women. So, unfortunately, she had to go down the road of doing it shall we say, the back alley, the coat, or whatever she did, which led her to never be able to bear children again. Mm-hmm. So I don't ever want anybody else but the mother of the child or the parents of the child, shall we say, to make that decision. That's how I feel personally. But when I go to the Word of God, our God is the God of life. You know what I mean? So how do I, in that position, 
minister to a woman who will come to me and ask, what do I do? I mean, of course, we're going to go to God of praying and let's be led of God and, and all of that. But I, I'm such a, such a, I'm torn because as a woman, I only want the woman to make that choice for herself. That is such a loaded, that's really going to be where we should kick off part two um, because there's so much <laughs> that question. And, um, and I, want to, I want to encourage you and I want to be able to give you information. I'll even make sure that I give you my email and, um, you know, if we need to, to follow up afterward. That I understand how torn people can be. People always bring up situations even like rape and molestation or incest and things like that. Trust me when I say there is always, making a plan for life is always God's best way. And I want to make sure that I bring plenty of scriptures in and, and scriptures to support that. But because we know how God does feel about life and we know about, you know, the baby leaping in the womb and there, there are just so many examples throughout. And I will bring, I will bring strong scriptures to part two for, um, for supporting God's position on life. But, um, but, yeah, there, it's kind of hard to be on both sides. I, I understand your desire and your, your compassion, you know, toward the people that you minister to. But, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to tackle that. And, and, I, and I'll, I'll even, like I said, leave Reverend uh, Pastor Arlene my information so we can talk some more offline. But I will promise to kick off part two with good, strong, you know, scriptures, uh, you know, basis for, for God's position on life and how you can have – a good, um, a good pro-life, uh, you know, position, and be able to support that well and um, and defend it well as also. Amen. Thank you. Um, and with yeah. that, um, <laughs> with that, my job is to uh, give you the greatest invitation that you will ever have in your life to everybody who's on the line, men, women alike. The greatest, the greatest time that you will ever have, the greatest invitation that you will ever be able to accept is an invitation uh, to be a part of his eternal family. Um, we always want you to know that Christ loves you, and he, well, he wants the best for you. So what I want to tell you is um, God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than having not been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. That if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, that with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So I want you to say this simple prayer with me, say the simple prayer after me, and, and you're going to be able to be a part of his eternal family. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. Save me. Live in me. I believe that you died and that you rose again just for me. I now accept you in my heart as my personal Savior and Lord of my life. Satan, you are no longer my Lord. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Amen. If you repeated that simple prayer, I can with great joy say welcome to the family of God. And Pastor Mitchell always encourages you to connect with the Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so you can grow in your new relationship with Christ. And you also have the opportunity to uh, become an eye champion where Pastor Mitchell will be your will be your, your covering pastor. And you can do this by going to www.pegm.org. And if you go there and, and click on partners, you'll find where you can become an I champion. And if you have accepted this invitation, please let us know by sending an email to the ministry at admin at pegm.org. Again, that address is admin at pegm. Dot O-R-G. We would love to celebrate with you that you are now a part of this great body of Christ eternally. So I'm going to pass that back to Pastor Arlene. Amen. Thank you so very much, Elder Toucher, for that. And thank you, Bethany, for this wonderful presentation today. Thank you for also um, already agreeing to come back because we want to continue this powerful conversation. Again, thank you for being transparent with us and, and sharing 
your experience and how you have educated us tonight. Um, like Bethany um, Evelyn was saying, there are so many things, and Tisa, there's so many things about this we all was not aware of. And like I said, here at Praying Upon the Global Ministries, we want to tackle some topics that we that were taboo when we were growing up. We, we, when we were asked questions, we would, we would be shunned. We were like, no, we can't talk about this. And no, shh, be quiet. So we are so excited that we are having an opportunity to be educated in the area we were so ignorant about and hearing God's plan for us, okay? Hearing God's plan is what we want to do. We want to hear God's agenda. We want to do what's pleasing, what's right in his eyes, and we are grateful to have this platform to be able to share this with you. We would love, I want to hear from our first-time visitors. Um, If you're here for the first time, I would love for you to come on so I can give you a special PEG and welcome. If you would like to tell me who you are and where you're calling in from, um, I would love to hear from you again. You can star six your phone to unmute so I can hear you and I can give you a warm welcome right after everybody comes on and tell me who they are. I'm going to ask Stephanie Williams to close us out in a word of prayer for those of you that may be dealing with um, abortion or maybe you don't agree with it all or maybe you're still you are dealing with anger and you're dealing with that forgiveness, unforgiveness, and you need to forgive and, and you have resentment for that boyfriend who made you do it, that, that father who made you, or even your husband. I want you to be able to release all of the guilt and all of the shame tonight. So I'm going to ask our sister Bethany to come on the line to, to pray for us. But if there's somebody on the line for the first time and you want to just say, hey, it's me, I just came on to support Bethany, or hey, it's me, um, I, I read about the topic and I just wanted to hear, um, I, I just wanted to hear about this topic, then let us know that you're on the line. We, want, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you. And as I'm talking again, Star Six, your phone, chime right in. While you're talking, I'm just hey. going to let you know. Hey. Hey, this is Tina. Hey. Call and say hey. Hey. Give y'all a shout out. Hey, Bethany. Hi, Skinner. Hey, uh, I just wanted to uh, let you know that you all know that I was here. I indicated on Facebook that I was. This was a very interesting topic, and that um, I was was very interested in hearing what would be shared. Very glad that I came on. Very glad that um, I was a part of it, and that I got to hear what it is that. Um, that Bethany, Bethany had to to share and the ministry. I thought that um, as many people <clears throat> who preceded me in speaking indicated that it's something that you don't ever hear. Like I've never heard of a, a ministry that spoke specifically to abortion in the church. And so with that, I just wanted to say um, bravo, bravo. Um, this is great. I will definitely be a part of the next one whenever you announce it. Um, and my position is very much like Petra's to the end of, um, you know, choice. Obviously, I don't have any skin in the game as I cannot have a child, which means that I cannot have an abortion. But um, with that, though, I think that it, it is. It's a, it, it's a, it's a really um, difficult dynamic to um take on or be a Christian and then be very committed to the the choice piece. And so I definitely would be interested in hearing what it is that you have to share in that thing. All right, I'm going. So I'll see you later. Bye. Blessing. Thank you so much. Sir. Hey, this is Mother Williams, Bethany's mom, and I would like to really thank God for such an anointed time for exposure to such a a highly needed topic. I want to thank Bethany for her beautiful presentation, but also thanking Minister and Pastor Arlene for allowing and opening the door for Bethany to share this for so many to hear. And if it is any encouragement, all of these babies that have been aborted, you will see in heaven. And that's a lot of backup from people who have seen their babies in heaven, and maybe you've heard of it. But thank you very much. 
enjoyed the whole time and will be enjoying it. God bless. Thanks so much, Mommy. Love you. Appreciate you joining us. Hey. <laughs> Why did she just make me cry? Because <laughs> <laughs> she does that. <laughs> <laughs> so special. She is special, and thank you so much for coming on and and sharing love. Oh my God, that just touched my heart so much. And thank you, Skinner, for representing for the men and, and sharing that. It always blesses my heart to hear who's on the line. Some people are just afraid to speak out, but when you finally speak up, it really blesses my heart so much. Thank you so much. And I think it was Mom's first time on the line, and I, I just got to do my. My first time visitors, welcome. And I got to give you some pom pom celebration. Pom pom, pom pom. Welcome to you, Mom. Welcome to you and to all of you that did not come on the line. I just want you to know we appreciate and we celebrate your presence. The pom poms is really just that, to celebrate you and your presence. We never take your presence for granted, and we want you to know that we love you. We bless God for you. We thank you for taking out the time to be with us. If something that was said tonight, something you heard blessed you, would you mind planting a seed at PE Global? Our cash app is PE Global. We are grace givers here, which means that whatever God blesses, puts on your heart to give, that's what you give. We don't ask you for a specific amount unless God asks me to ask you. But tonight, if you would be a grace giver and be a blessing so that we can be a blessing, and that is P-E Global on our Cash App. And if you do not and you're not a fan of Cash App, we are on Zelle, and you can send that to info at P-E-G-M.org. The email address is info at P-E-G-M dot org. The name is prayer, and the last name is empowerment. You can also do it in, in, at PayPal as well. Either way, we would receive your blessing. Whatever you decide to share, we would gladly receive. We thank you in advance for being a blessing to us so that we can bless others. And if you are free on Wednesday mornings, we are always doing our command your morning at 6 a.m., This is our time of fellowshipping, and we would love for you to fellowship with us. We have had a phenomenal prayer, March Madness Men's Prayer Challenge. It has been phenomenal, and we thank God for what he is doing here at the ministry. We have been praying for for 29 days. We have been rising early at 6 a.m. on this prayer line, praying for men to take the lead in prayer. And we have had women on the line and sometimes men to come after we have prayed and after they have prayed to give them a word of encouragement. And so many men have reached out to say, thank you so much. We really needed this. And I I just want to share this before I bring Bethany back on. No matter how strange it may seem to you, whatever the directive is that God is telling you to do, please do that. Please go ahead and do it because Someone said to me, I, you, you got it mixed up. Why are you celebrating men on the month that we're supposed to be celebrating women? And I said, because God says so. <laughs> I'm doing it because God says so. And I tell you, the men have reached out and they have said to me, Pastor Arlene, you don't know how much I've needed this. Uh, one man, he was so touched, he had led us in prayer. And when I reached out to him to say, thank you for blessing us, he says, I can't stop the tears from flowing. I, I so needed to hear those words. We've had young men on, we have bishops, we have pastors, we had just laymen, we had deacons, and it's just been so such a blessing to hear men pray. And I just want you all to keep on praying for us as we endeavor to do the work of the Lord. And as God, we have planted the seed. This is our job, Prayer and Empowerment Global Ministry. We have planted the seed of prayer. Now we believe that God is going to send someone to pour the water and we believe that God is going to give the increase. Will you continue to pray for us as we pray for you? Because we will continue to do that. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it back on to Bethany Williams. She's going to say a closing prayer. And then we're going to do our Walton's goodbye where everybody come on the line. And we say goodbye to everybody we can remember that was on the line. And we shout out your name like as if we was um, saying goodnight to everybody and we were just going to our pajamas and going to bed like that. So um, that's the fun part. <laughs> that's the fun part about us being together. But, Bethany, if you can just um, lift up a word of prayer for us, for everybody on the line, I would greatly appreciate that. Amen. I sure will. Can you still hear me? 
Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, great. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. You are such an awesome and prayer-answering God. We love you. We honor you. We adore you, Lord. You know that we approached this assignment tonight to only lift you up and to expose Satan and his lies and to give you glory and honor, Lord. And we've achieved that in such a small measure, Lord. We thank you for the desire for more and for more opportunity to illuminate your scriptures, to illuminate your heart on this matter, Lord God. We just thank you. We thank you for your love for each of us, Lord. We thank you for the love that you have for each daughter and son that's on this line, Lord. We thank you for those of us that have a relationship with you and those that may have surrendered their life to you tonight, Lord, and we thank you for the seeds that were planted tonight, Lord, the seeds in the hearts of men and women that need um, a deeper walk with you, Lord God. We're just grateful to you for every household that's represented here, Lord. We pray for every heart that's represented, whether somebody is personally post-abortive or whether they had a participation in, a, in an abortion decision or had an influence or had, a, had any small role, Lord, in, in any of that, Lord. A lot of times forgiveness is needed on all of those levels as well, Lord, and we just pray that you would help each and every person on this line to realize how much you love them, that, that, uh, that the sin of abortion is real and it's so pervasive in our society, and you are determined to pull the, pull the covers off of Satan's lies and free your people, Lord, free your daughters, free your sons, and let us be able to walk in the victory that is ours because we belong to you, Lord God. We just thank you that even if tears are being shed right now, Lord, because people had a need for this, and as they shared, they didn't know ministries like this existed. I thank you for my pastor, Lord. I thank you for Pastor Jenkins and uh, First Lady Trina Jenkins and the vision that they had to be able to support uh, Reverend Allison Johnson being able to start this ministry 14 years ago, Lord, and the women that have come through and received healing. And now that we're not only a global church and I have an internet presence, Lord, that we're able to reach out to so many more, Lord. And I pray for the ones that are contemplating, participating in the, in the future sessions of this, of this ministry and even part, uh, pon, you know, uh, pondering the idea of uh, starting a ministry like this at their churches, Lord God. We just pray that you would speak to the hearts of your people and, and influence them for, uh, to make strong decisions, Lord, that would glorify you and elevate and, and uh, put you on the platform and put your truth on the platform and shine the light on your truth, Lord God. That's what we're about. We are to be salt and light in this earth, and we thank you for the assignment to be salt and light. We thank you for the, for the, for the privilege to be salt and light and to represent you. We love you. We pray for each household that's represented on this call, and we pray that you would... Um, that you would just continue to protect us during this, during this time in our societies, Lord. Help us to, to continue to make choices each and every day that glorify you and honor you and lift you up and uh, draw others towards you, Lord. We love you, and we thank you again for uh, a precious night of ministry. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so very much for that powerful prayer, sensitive, heartfelt, prayer, um, listening up to all of us. And we want you to know that we should have this this recording on our YouTube page, which is under PE Global as well. So if you can go ahead there and subscribe, I would say give us about a day or two or maybe more. Let's say the end of the week, um, we have to go through a, a resource to have that up and running. We're not um, that capable yet, praise Jesus, but we're going to get to the place where we'll be able to do that ourselves. But until we get to that place, um, come back, circle back, and you will be able to hear this replay again on YouTube real soon. But we're going to keep you noticed. We're going to pray. Keep your, Start praying now that um, our sister Bethany Williams will be available to come back next week. Stop praying now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Stop praying now. She'll be able to come back real soon so we can continue this conversation. Good night, everybody. I'm going to mute your phone. Come on the line and say good night to everybody. Come on, everybody, unmute your phones. Good night, Janet. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night, all. Good night, Good night everybody. Night. Hugs and hearts. Good night. Love to all. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. It was a good night. Good night. Bless you. Bless you all. Yes, good night, Blessing. Blessing. Good information. Good night. 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 Good night.
<laughs> Hugs and hearts. Love everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Love you. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord.